when to use a form, when to use a survey. They are two different ways of collecting information from your audience. A form is quite literally, a think of it as like a static piece of paper, okay? Inside a form, it's usually one single page view and you can ask simple questions where people are inputting data or selecting a checkbox. It's quite static. However, you can do conditional log logic and all that kind of stuff in forms. I will not go into that today, but just to give you the understanding, basic information collection, use a form. If you want to more do like a quiz style of asking questions, then you're going to want to use. So I'll just take you in and show you the slight difference in the presentation of these. Inside websites and funnels, this is where you have forms. If I go to the form builder, I want to show you the difference here. Let's just grab one of these examples in the page. This is what a form looks like. It's like a simple page. You can change the background. Um, you can add in any kind of field that you want by pressing the add button. First name, you might add last name, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so a form's just this kind of single page. You can add check boxes, you can add drop downs, any kind of information fields that you want to collect, but it's quite static. If you want to create a survey, then you're going to go up into, again, websites and funnels. Right next to forms, you've got surveys. You've got the survey builder, add a survey start from scratch there's templates in there by the way and this is where you're going to start building out your survey so the first question is let's press over here let's add first name last name last name last name we don't need full name again so let's get rid of that we also want their email address now i recommend the first page of your survey is always this information because then if they bail and don't complete the survey at least you hopefully have captured this. <laughs> now that you want to make sure that their um, contact details are required. You see there, it's got a little star on it. I usually make the first name required. You see here, I've clicked that required button. That means they can't continue having at least put their first name and their email address down. I always make the first name and the email address required because that's the main information I want. Last name, I usually leave as optional. Let's press save. Now we can add in another slide, add a slide, they're going to see the next page. Now this is where we're going to add in our questions. So we're going to go over to custom fields and we want to, this custom field, this is a piece of information, a question you want to ask. It's going to ask you, where do you want that information to be saved in the client's record? Do you want it to be saved within their contact information? Do you want it to be saved within their additional information? So anything that's not contact information, but in like general info or something like that. But I'm going to press add a field. And this is where, I don't know, perhaps we want to have a drop down. Press drop down, press next. And this might be, I don't know, what is your favorite color? Whatever your question is going to be. Um, I'm not going to spell properly. This is where we want that information to be saved. This isn't contact information. It's just additional info. So in the client's record, I want it to be saved, not in the contact information tab, but in their additional information tab, just so that we don't have loads and loads of data in the front page of that client's record. It's just an organization of, of what's it called? Just the organization of information. So now this is where we're going to put in our options. So this is, I want, I've got red, blue, you can add as many as you want. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Press save. So what is your favorite color? What is your favorite color? Drag and drop. There we go. So now you can see we press save. Now preview, press preview and you can see what it looks like to the student. Now, of course, you can add images to every page. Test next. What's your favorite color? Oh, blue. Submit. So you can see there, thank you for taking time to complete the survey. You can simply go through now and add as many different elements as you want. Like I said, if you wanted to add images, go to quick add. And where's an image over here? There we go. You might want to add an image here, pick something random. So if you want to add pictures, if this is like a quiz you're doing on, I don't know, healthy eating, or you can add in your pictures if you want to. But basically you're using the custom fields here to create any kind of question you want. Monetary might be, for instance, I've, I've mentioned last week, we've got real estate agents, for instance, they need to know what the average annual household income is in order to be able to sell and promote them the right level of housing we've got consultants who are using this to for loans we've got financiers who need to know people's income so that they can get the right financial quotes to them so it might be here like how much is your household income don't care about the text this is just additional information 
and we're going to press save. Okay, so now I'm going to just go back here and put in how much. How much is your household income? You see here it's a dollar amount. Save. So you can keep building this out unlimited. Any of you who have taken my personalized business success checklist that I've just let everyone know about, that's built on surveys. So you see that I've changed my colors to pink <laughs> and it just takes you through one question at a time. Now, the other fancy thing, you can actually skip questions based on the last question. I won't go too deep into this, but this is how you create these really cool quizzes. So for example, what's your favorite color? This is where we can add whether it's required question or not. But where is my settings over here? So you see here on the, each slide, you've got three tiny dots on the right hand side above the question itself. Click on settings. And now you can actually say skip to this question or this question. You can do those kinds of things as well. It gets very fancy. And of course, you can hire experts to help you build your 